$125 million. What is that number, which was paid for the Portland WNBA franchise, mean for everything else? We're also going to talk Minnesota Lynx. Some remaining questions here in the final hours of the 2024 WNBA regular season. The playoffs coming this weekend. So much to get to. Lockdown Women's Basketball starts now. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And a very pleasant Wednesday afternoon to you. My name is Howard Magdal, and I want to welcome you to Locked On Women's Basketball. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. Of course, it is not just me. It is the incredible team across the board over at the next at the next tubes.com. We have over a hundred reported pieces every single month, $9 a month, $72 a year. You get every one of them sent to your inbox. You're always up to date about women's basketball. Thanks to our staff. Go to the next hoops.com, subscribe, support today. This is the work that matters and it is ever expanding work as we discovered officially today. Of course, the great Sean Hyken over at the Rose Report had broken this news a while ago. Sean will actually be joining Natalie Heverin on Friday's show. Sean's going to be at the press conference later this afternoon. The official announcement from Commissioner Kathy Engelbert that Portland, after some stops and starts, is going to be the next and the 15th WNBA team. So segment one, we're going to talk about a little bit of the numbers behind it because it's very striking for what it means for who won and some big old losers who are not jumping on the bandwagon in time and some people who got off a little early, a little early, just kind of missed out. So that'll be segment one. Segment two, we got to talk to Minnesota Lynch. We've got to. Talk Minnesota Lynx. Not enough people are talking about the Lynx. I'm writing about them over at the Nine newsletter, T H E I X sports.com. You can go check that out. But talking to you about Cheryl Reeve and what the Lynx have done here, because by the numbers, it's fairly absurd. And then segment three, we'll talk about the remaining questions here. It all ends tomorrow night the regular season, but we got things we don't know yet. But segment one, and let's just start with it. John Canzano, one of the best reporters there is, reported this morning in his newsletter that not only does Portland have a WNBA team, the owners are paying $125 million dollars for the privilege. RAJ Sports will begin play in 2026, the WNBA, after having zero expansion from 2008 through 2024, will in 2025 have the Golden State Valkyries. In 2026, two additional teams, one in Toronto, one in Portland. Where's that 16th team going to be? Well, we're going to talk about that in a second. $125 million, just to put it in perspective, the fee for the last little while that the WNBA has been looking for folks to hit was $50 million. $50 million. I've done the math. $125 is more. It's more than twice as much. Again, and I've made this comparison before on the show, but men's sports is a developed economy. Women's sports is a developing economy. What that means is that the percentage, the rate increases for investment is so exponential that people who aren't getting on board, they're going to feel really silly about it, right? I mean, just to put it in perspective, The WNBA sold 16% of the league 
of the leagues, the entire league, not a team, for $75 million in 2020. And we didn't, it was debated at the time, you know, certainly in hindsight, you say, oh my God, that's such a low price, considering that one team is now fetching $125 million expansion fee. We're seeing teams valued well north of that. The Seattle Storm last year were at $161 million for an individual team. So that was a good investment. Uh, Kathy Engelbert, who is certainly no stranger to business, uh, has said that it was existential. When you think about what 2020 ultimately was, having to be played in the, in the bubble, no fans, all of those things, having that money, having that influx come, you could argue in some ways has helped to make the growth that followed possible that made it possible for these teams to be valued at higher numbers. So none of it can be taken in a vacuum. It's all way too complicated for this is good, this is bad. What is clear, what is indisputable is those numbers are going up and they're going up fast. And so we're sitting here with that final piece to the puzzle. And when I say final, I don't believe the W will stop at 16. But Kathy Engelbert has made it clear that 16 teams by 2028 is the goal. And they are now, after being behind schedule for a significant amount of this expansion conversation that's been going on for a long time, they're right on or ahead of schedule. And one more team. So I'm just going to I'm gonna bring it out there. Two big people I'm thinking about today. Number one, Josh Harris. Josh Harris owns the 76ers. They have invested, Harris's investment group, in almost every league you can imagine under the sun into the Washington Commanders and the NFL and into Major League Soccer and into uh, girls' flag football. I'm not sarcastic, not a joke. It's what they've done. And I, I've understood for some time that if Harris would simply come up with the $50 million, that the WNBA would have expanded to Philadelphia. That would have happened. Fifth largest market in America, a basketball city, city of Dawn Staley and of Cheryl Reeve and of Gina Oriema and of Muffet McGraw and Yolanda Laney and Kalia Copper and Natasha Cloud. It goes on and on. Marianne Stanley and Immaculata. We could, we could do this all day. This is a women's basketball city. Philadelphia, $50 million probably ain't going to cut it next time. Prices went up by a lot. And while we are not seeing the NBA owner in the city of Philadelphia take advantage of the built-in opportunities, it boggles the mind. I don't understand it. Opportunity window is not closed. It's going to cost more. Numbers are still going that way. Getting bigger. Long past time. And here's the other one before we get to break and we get into segment two. How'd you like to be Jim Dolan today? Jim Dolan took the New York Liberty. Oh, the sure money losing. New York Liberty. Oh, how could you ever find a way to make money with the WNBA team? I don't know, maybe invest in them. And left them by the side of the road. People forget because of how well it ultimately worked out. The lead was in a real possibility of not having an anchor in New York. Because if you're not playing in Madison Square Garden and you're not playing at Barclays Center, which happened because Joe and Clara Sy bought the team and put that team at Barclays Center, the options get small quick in New York City. They do. But send them to Westchester Purgatory, playing in an arena that seats 80 people. I have to double check that, but I believe it was 80 people. And 
essentially said, I'm selling, I don't have a buyer yet. Essentially sold for parts in terms of what the number was. The number was not, it was not large. It was not 125 million. And of course, the Liberty packing Barclays Center, number one overall seed, on the cusp of potentially their first championship, a marquee place to watch a game. Everyone gets it. Celebrity row filled to capacity. And I mean, what else to what else to say beyond Ellie the elephant, the phenomenon? How do you think Jim Dolan's feeling today? 125 million for the expansion fee. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, to be a fly on the wall in Jim Dolan's office. But the Liberty do not have a certainty of winning that championship. And that's because of the Minnesota Lynx, among other teams, but particularly the Minnesota Lynx. So back with segment two in just a minute, talking about Cheryl Reeve and the job that the Lynx have done this year, because attention must be paid. I'm Howard Megdahl. You are listening to Locked On Women's Basketball. No, Jim Dolan's probably not sleeping well these days, but you are, if you have miracle made sheets like I do, it's September, the weather's turning cooler, doesn't matter, too hot, too cold. Miracle made sheets with their silver infused fabrics are temperature regulating. So I have the peace of mind knowing when I go to bed at night, I'm going to be able to sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. They look great. They feel great with self-cooling properties, self-cleaning, comfort and quality. Miracle-made sheets are luxurious in all the ways you want your bed to feel. So do it. Join us. Join the miracle, folks, by going to trymiracle.com slash locked on. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash locked on to try miracle-made sheets today. And they've got this crazy offer. Not only if you buy today can you get over 40% off, you get an extra 20% and a three free towel set if you use promo locked on at checkout. Again, go to trymiracle.com slash locked on and use code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N to claim your three piece towel set and save over 40% off. Trymiracle.com slash locked on. Thank you to Miracle Made for sponsoring this episode. She's so comfortable, perhaps even Jim Dolan would sleep comfortably on them. Locked on Women's Basketball is also brought to you by FanDuel. And you've obviously heard me talk about FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book. But you may not know that now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Let's say you're just outside of Philadelphia, but you want to see, oh my God, how are the New York Giants going to lose this week? Well, Thankfully, this FanDuel offer for NFL Sunday Ticket lets you do it. So go check it out. Bet $5. Get the three-week free trial. Visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sportsbook. Howard Meddahl, Locked on Women's Basketball. Back here in segment two. And I just, I, I, I want to set the scene. I know a lot of you guys are new. A lot of you guys are still adjusting to the lead. And to understand this idea of a super team in Las Vegas, a super team in New York, there have been super teams as long as there have been the WNBA. Google Houston Comets. You know, you'll see it. But the best team I think I ever saw and covered was that Minnesota Lynch team in the 2010s. That won championships in 2011, in 2013, in 2015, in 2017. We'll talk about another time how close they came and perhaps should have won 
in 2016. Go watch that last minute 24 and see what calls were made and not made. Yeah. Anyway, different story, different time. Those teams had five Hall of Famers in the starting lineup. Five Hall of Famers. You had Maya Moore, obviously, Simone Augustus, the best center in the history of the league, and Sylvia Fowles uh, comes over midway through 2015, wins finals MVP. Lindsey Whalen, obviously, pride of Minnesota point guard. Rebecca Brunson. Here's the list of people who have won more WNBA championships than Brunson's five. End of list. Not a coincidence. Great team. Not easy to put together. It's funny. The conversation back then was, and Cheryl Reeve talked about this, you know, you didn't say, oh, well, you have all these stars. Not so easy to do. You actually have to make it all work. You, everybody needs to share the ball. It is. It's a challenging thing. And Sandy Brandello deserves a ton of credit for doing it in New York this year. However, it's still pretty, it's a good problem to have. It's first world problem, right? If you want to, oh, what do we do with all of our superstar talent? The Lynx did it a different way this year. I wrote about this over at the nine, so you hear about it. It's a collective rather than a super team, is the way Cheryl framed it. And when did she frame it? Oh, after they went and beat New York handily on Sunday afternoon, kept New York from clinching that top overall seed. Liberty got it last night. But in New York, Minnesota dominated, led by as many as 26 points in that game. And then they went out on Tuesday night against the Sun team, fighting for that three seed. And they beat that Sun team. Jeanette, made some good plays late. Minnesota, what do they do? Back-to-back ATOs, right? Nafisa Collier, they feed her inside. She finishes. She's on my all WNBA first team. Again, just incredible. But they don't have stars up and down the lineup. Kayla McBride is a Hall of Famer, in my view. But she's done it with longevity. She's done it in a quiet kind of way. Bridget Carlton, it took Bridget Carlton a good five years to find the self-confidence to be the type of willing shooter that Cheryl Rivas needed her to be. She was doubling her three-point attempts per game first half of this year. Second half, she's tripled it. She's making 44% of them. Did you see her? Hit that shot to beat Connecticut on Tuesday night. That might have been the game of the year so far. That was amazing. She did not hesitate. And as a team brimming with confidence, Courtney Williams, 12 assists. Courtney Williams has become an elite point guard in this league. Really amazing. The way these parts fit. Alana Smith. How many centers are better than Alana Smith right now in the entire league? Two-way centers. It's a short list. You just go up and down the roster. Sandal Lucini, just deadly from beyond the arc. Everyone hits those shots. And so you go back, and, and I talked to Cheryl about this a little bit. I want you to hear from her, and then we'll finish up. But... Basically said, your team is tops in the lead in defensive rating, like they were in 2017. Your team is tops in the lead in three-point shooting percentage, as they were in 2017. But you're doing it in a totally different way. How are you doing it? And how do you compare those two teams? So we're going to hear from Cheryl. And then we're going to finish up after this, all about what's left to find out. So I'm Howard Magdal. You're listening to Lockdown Women's Basketball. But first, Lockdown Women's Basketball is brought to you by Game Time. And look, whether you're going to WNBA playoff games or concerts or theater, you name it, 
game time gives you the opportunity to see what you want to see the way you want to see it. Now, you have to turn on the feature, but once you do, game time's got something called all in pricing. So you're able to see, oh, it costs this much, not, oh, it's this much and then there are fees. Oh, it's this much and then there's extras. The all in pricing feature, which again, I'm just reminding you, you got to turn it on, but do it because game time, it, it just is another way that the app is making things easier. I love the 360 degree view. I love the fact that they guarantee your pricing. If you don't get the lowest price from game time, they will credit you 110% of the difference. How do you do all this? Well, it's easy. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. So back here in segment three, just go ahead and listen to Cheryl. And then we'll come back and we'll finish on up. Hey, Cheryl, I got two for you if I could. Um, first one is just that you guys are atop the lead in three-point uh, percentage and in defensive efficiency here, as you were in 2017. You obviously totally turned over roster, completely different way of getting there. What are the similarities that you see? Uh, and what are some of the biggest differences, wrinkles when it comes to what you guys are doing? Sandy mentioned you guys play uh, like the Serbian national team uh, at times. Was that good? It was a compliment. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. I'm just kidding. Of course, I know it was a. They were. They were. They were terrific. Uh, uh, well, and that's great because if if we know those those two things, the defensive and the you know three point shooting efficiency, we won in 17, so that means we'll win in 2024. So that's great. Um, so I don't have to worry uh, the rest of the way here. Um, I mean, it's it's two different teams, you know, Howard. So it's really really hard. Um, I just know that we had some things that we wanted to be better at going into 2024. Uh, and then we went from being, you know, bad at both of those things to um, this jump. Um, and, and that's been fun. I think the same thing. I just think the players have confidence in themselves. They have confidence in each other. Um, you know, I think that belief, I think the evolution of a player like Bridget Carlton um, in a season like this, you know, she, she's been a big part of that. And, Courtney Williams' ability to direct at the at the top of the offense and give them belief. She's always pumping them, um, you know. But I mean, obviously the teams are so different. You know, the number one thing I'm going to tell you is personnel. They're Hall of Famers that uh, we had in 2017, and um, you know this group. You know, it's like, you know, I guess it's proof that you can do this without Hall of Famers, which is fun. And so that's the other part to me is that group obviously winning four titles. You're in the finals a couple other times. Do you see any gap between what this team is doing and capable of and those teams, which obviously arguably had the best run in the history of this league? Yeah, that's just so hard for me, um, you know, because the league was different then. Teams are different now. Like, it's just, you know, for me, I think that's just not not a great comparison. I understand it. Um, but I, I just, yeah, I think things are so different. So again, as you hear from Cheryl, you know, she said, I understand the question, but we get there in a different way. Here's what I know. When we talked about it at the nine, I spoke to folks around the league. New York is not the favorite in a way that a one seed often is. There are plenty of people who believe New York will win the title. It would not surprise me if the New York Liberty win the WNBA title. They have been the best team for most of the year. But Minnesota just went out and they won on the road. This Lynch team wins easily and frequently on the road in New York, in Connecticut. They figured ways to slow down John Paul Jones, which not a lot of teams are able to do. They just, they make it difficult and they're so connected at both ends. One WNBA GM said to me, they're the co-favorites. Minnesota and New York. I think that's about fair. But I don't know that necessarily public perception is called out. Maybe it has. That's always a difficult game to play, right? How do you measure that? But certainly around the league, there is an understanding. If New York wins, it won't be a surprise. 
If Minnesota wins, it won't be a surprise. And there are other teams who obviously will have a say in this before it's said and done. Connecticut, Las Vegas, if Seattle can get healthy, Seattle, and I've said this to you before on the show, Indiana, do not sleep on Indiana making a run and finding still another level. And Christy Side's done an incredible job with that team. But yeah, New York and Minnesota, they're the co-favorites. And New York's done it with elite level talent coached by one of the greats in Sandy Brandello. What Cheryl and Katie Smith and Rebecca Brunson, oh, there's that name again. What they're all doing, right through analytics with the team that Cheryl and Claire Duelli has put together in the front office. Attention must be paid. So I am curious to see how they finish up. I'm curious to see who gets that eight seed. Atlanta once again in the driver's seat. Jordan Canada. We just saw her on the show yesterday. Look at what Jordan Canada did last night. That Atlanta team. I bet they wish they knew what the standings looked like if they'd been healthy all season. So that's the remaining question. How's this lottery going to shake out? The Paige Becker's Bowl. I am fascinated to see how this all comes together, how they finish. And we really, we got to see Seattle's in that conversation, but healthy. As you Magbador was on my all WNBA defensive team and in the running to win that award. DPOI, I'm having a hard time with it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, as he's got to be healthy, Jewel's got to be healthy. They got to shoot threes at a better clip than they have for most of the year. They've got the personnel to do it. Hasn't happened yet. We got to see what they do. That's what I'm watching. Like when I go look at a Seattle Storm box score, the first thing I'm looking at is three point makes, three point attempts. So that's, there's a lot to figure out. We got, a big weekend coming. Very exciting days ahead here at Locked on Women's Basketball as well. I want to thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Now, for your second listen, you can go and find Locked on NBA. It's, as I understand it, a professional basketball league for men. And, um, you know, more power to them getting that opportunity. And uh, kudos to the WNBA for supporting their little brother lead. Find Locked On NBA on YouTube or wherever you go to listen to podcasts. Make sure you're with us tomorrow. Uh, massive upgrade in the host chair. Gigi Spear will be joining us. Uh, she'll be talking to Brendan Lachine from the Connecticut Sun. Terrific play-by-play announcer talking about the playoffs to come. And Friday... Natalie Heverin, the great Natalie Heverin, talking to Sean Hyken about all things Portland WNBA, which is now officially a reality. So until then, I am Howard Megdahl, wishing all of you a wonderful Wednesday. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day.